Hello, the camp! Right on in. It's time for the Trail Boss's Journal. Stories and lessons to give you a message of hope and brighten your day. There's coffee on the fire. Pour yourself a cup. I've just finished reading the newest entry in the old Trail Boss's Journal. After years of nursing cows and ramrodding cowboys up the trail, the old trail boss, Pastor Jack Blease, began keeping a journal so he would remember the events and the folks who crossed his trail. Now let's join Pastor Jack over at the fire for a story and quiet reflection. Trail Boss's Journal. Trail date, June 8th, 1890. Location, somewhere on the trail. Dear Journal, more than once I've sat down to write in here thinking, now I've done or seen it all. Well, this is another of those. I think you'll see what I mean. We've been four weeks on the trail, the western trail this time, trailing about 3,000 head to Ogallala and towards the northern ranges. Our cook was none other than Mr. Boomer Johnson. Yes, that Boomer Johnson. Former bad man, now turned camp cook. It seems time had caught up with the gunfighter, and his fast draw was now better suited to rattling pots and pans. But old Boomer knowed his business, and he could cook to make you smile. But the old attitude was still there, and his reputation was still solid. So dinner time, for the most part, was quiet, and you ate what you got. One of the boys who had been a wrangler on the ranch where Boomer was previously the cook told the tale of Boomer using the sight on his six-shooter to cut the pie lid, and then used the barrel to crimp the edges. One of his specialties was donuts, always a cowboy's favorite treat. And they say, now I never saw it, the way he made the donut holes was to toss the donut in the air and drill the holes plumb center by shooting straight through it with his pistol. Then one morning last week, as Boomer opened the flour sack to put together the biscuits for breakfast, he made a startling discovery. One that even made him flinch a little bit, but didn't stop his preparation. He just shrugged his shoulders, rolled and cut the biscuits, and prepared to put them in the Dutch oven on the fire. Thinking again about his discovery, he added some extra lard in the bottom of the oven to give a, a little crunchier texture. He brushed the tops the same way, and when they came out of the oven and were piled high next to the meat and beans, they fairly glistened in the morning sun. And to our surprise, he even brought out some honey to put on the hot rocks. It seemed there was something a little different in the taste, but nobody said a thing until Sleepy Kid the Wrangler took the first bite out of his and spoke up. Boomer, he said innocently enough, when did you start putting raisins in the biscuits? They almost looked like weevils. The hands all shouted together, weevils in the biscuits, we're all gonna die. Well, nobody died. And even though the flour was tainted, it was sifted through and put in the clean flour sack, and that made everybody relax a little. Not that each piece of food was looked over pretty careful from then on. Boomer's not with a drive anymore, but that's another story for another day. Fire's about out. Stars are shining. Time for my talk with the Lord. Let me share a scripture reference with you that at first blush may not seem like it ties into our story, but I think it does, and, and hear me out. Over in Galatians 5, 9, it says, Alas, it only takes a little leaven to affect the whole lump. What that means is, of course, that in the Old Testament, leaven was not to be put into the bread because of the fact that, that it, would, it would affect it greatly. And leaven can be anything from baking powder to baking soda to yeast and so what it does is, if used correctly, well, it adds to the flavor and the texture of something it's in. But if used incorrectly, well, it kind of spoils it. Understand what I mean? So in much the same way in our story, what happens with weevils is that they can impact and affect the entity that they end up in. So what do you know about bull weevils? What do you know about these nasty sounding little critters? Well, the boll weevil that affects flowers is actually a beetle. And it's a beetle that, that lives by eating really fine ground grain, like in flour. Now, they're related to the boll weevil, which you may have heard of in history. And boll weevils, of course, could destroy whole cotton crops because they, they, ate, they ate the buds of the, of the cotton. So they infect things and they can, they can, they can taint them. 
Now, really, boll weevils are not going to make you sick and you're not going to die. But you see, the effect is that they spoil the entity they're in. So when we look at sin, okay, what happens when sin enters our life and when sin is hatched, innocently enough maybe in us? Yeah, it begins to affect the whole entity, doesn't it? It begins to affect us. It begins to taint us and make us less than the perfected person that God created us to be. And here's the deal. You're never going to find one weevil. You're never going to find one beetle in there, aren't you? And you're going to find that they grow and they grow and they grow. And if you, and if you don't treat it, if you don't sift it out, well, then it begins to spoil the whole entity. Sin is so like that. There, there is no little sin. Sin is sin. And if we, if we allow it to go unchecked, if we don't invite Christ in our life to sift us through and get us out of there, why, we're going to die when, when all is said and done. You know, the wages of sin is death, the Bible tells us. But the free gift of God, by sifting, is eternal life in His Son. Bo evils. Pay attention. Sift them out of your life. See you on down the trail. And if you would like to be on the trail of that eternal drive, join us in saying this prayer. Lord Jesus, reckon I ain't been the best of folk. I know I've wandered off the path more times than I can count. So here I am, with my hat in hand, asking for your forgiveness. I know you died for my sins and rose again. Come on in, Jesus. Take the reins of my life. Much obliged for saving me. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, welcome to the Roundup. We invite you to be a part of our community of believers each Sunday morning for Cowboy Church Live. We meet up at 9 a.m. on Facebook or YouTube. You can find more information on our website at trailbossministry.com.